Hello mga kawawmat! In this video lesson, we will discuss the types of quantitative research. But before we proceed to our discussion, don't forget to like our videos and subscribe na rin kayo. Quantitative researches are classified into non-experimental and experimental. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng quantitative research. First is the non-experimental at second, experimental. Under non-experimental research, meron tayong descriptive research and correlational research. And under experimental research, meron naman tayong true experimental and quasi-experimental. So itong apat na to, ito lang yung i-discuss natin dahil ito lang yung madalas gamitin sa research lalo na sa senior high school. Non-experimental research, this kind of research allows the researcher to either describe a situation or phenomenon or the relationship between two or more variables without any interference from the proponent. So, maari itong current events or scenario, halimbawa na lang yung online class, distance learning, at yung about COVID-19. In non-experimental research, the researchers collect data without making changes or introducing treatments. So, in non-experimental research, wala po tayong uh, intervention. So, pag sinabi nating intervention, maari itong innovation, program, or strategy. So, walang, uh, wala tayong test na intervention sa non-experimental research. There are two major kinds of non-experimental research. First, is the descriptive research. It deals with describing the nature, characteristics, and components of the populations or a phenomenon. Manipulation of variable or search for cause and effect is not applicable in relating to the phenomenon and this design attempts to determine the frequency with which it occurs and find general attributes of the presently existing situation. So, kagaya ng nabanggit ko kanina, ito ay yung mga current events or yung mga trending na social issues. And then, manipulation of variables is not applicable. So, hindi ito kagaya ng experimental research na nakukontrol natin yung variable. Kadalasan, kadalasan sa descriptive research is more in survey. So, for example, descriptive research is used for if you want to know how many hours senior high school students spent in playing online games. Another, how many malnourished students who failed in the achievement test. And how healthy is the food served during lunchtime in the public school. So ito ay tumutukoy lang o describe kinukuha lang natin. So wala tayong tinitest. So, isang halimbawa o isang title research ng descriptive factors affecting the academic performance of senior high school students. So, yung word na factors, so wala tayong ititest. Ang gagawin lang dyan, so ano, ano kayo mga possible factors na makakapik sa academic performance? So, halimbawa nilang attendance, family, financial support, working student, an environment. So, ang gagawin lang dito, magsisurvey ka lang, tatanungin mo lang, uh, magtatanong ka lang kung ano yung mga naka-apekto no, sa uh, may kinalaman kung bakit naapektuhan yung performance nila sa pag-aaral. Another kind of non-experimental research is the correlational research. It is primarily concerned with an orderly systematic investigation of the nature of relationships or associations between the among variables without necessarily investigating into casual reason underlying them. Furthermore, it is also concerned with the extent of relationships that exist between or among the variables. So, this research design is to measure the strength of the relationship between two variables. For example, the performance in mathematics and the score in practical research too. If performance in mathematics can be used to predict performance then, the higher the mathematics grade, the higher most likely be the score in practical research too. 
correlational research in employed if you like to know, for example, if the following factors are related to each other, sex and mathematical ability, age and leadership style, and the occupation and the lifespan. So be between the relationship of two variables. The different types of correlation, so first is positive correlation. An increase in one variable leads to increase the other variable. A decrease in one variable will also decrease in the other variable. So for example, family income and daily allowance. And so maaring pag uh, mataas yung income nyo, of course, mataas, uh, malaki rin yung magiging allowance. Pero kapag medyo maliit lang yung income ng family nyo, bababa din yung magiging allowance mo. Another type of correlation is the negative correlation. So, paano nangyayari? Ito ay opposite dun sa positive correlation natin. Kung sa positive correlation, kung ang isang variable tumataas, dapat yung another variable tumataas din. Dito sa negative correlation, kapag yung isang variable tumataas, yung other variable bumababa. So, opposite dun sa positive correlation. So, halimbawa, yung age of a car and price of the car. So, pag, pag brand new pa yung car natin, pag binili mo yan, ibig sabihin, mas mahal yan pag binili mo. Pero kapag luma na yan, ibig sabihin, mas mababa na yung presyo niyan. Another type of correlation. So, tuwing kailan lang uh, nagkakaroon na no correlation. Kapag yung dalawang variable natin, ay hindi related sa isa't isa. So, halimbawa na lang, yung number of spent in studying and height of the students. Kasi wala namang kinalaman yung height sa magiging result dun sa performance mo sa grade mo, o sa performance mo sa pag-aaral mo. So, ito'y halimbawa ng title research about correlational So, the relationship between playing online games and the grade point average. So, meron tayong dalawang variable dito, yung online games and GPA. So, sinusukat kung talagang merong relationship. Yung pa, let's say, uh, kung ang paglalaro ba ng online games ay nakaka-apekto doon sa magiging uh, performance mo sa school. So, meron din naman kasi na kahit naglalaro, mataas pa rin yung grade na nakukuha. Another kind of quantitative research is the experimental research. So this kind of research is centrally concerned with constructing research that is high in causal validity. So pag sinabi natin causal validity, more on why, bakit, ano yung dahilan, ano yung reason. So may dahilan. And then scientific approach. Pag sinabi natin scientific approach, it involved hypothesis testing. So, kagaya ng napag-aralan natin sa statistics and probability, so, yung hypothesis testing, maa-apply natin dito sa experimental research. Researchers collect data with making changes or introducing treatments. So, kung sa non-experimental research ay walang ginagamit na intervention, dito sa experimental research, may gagamitin tayong intervention. Or may gagamitin tayong strategy, may itetest tayong strategy, program, or innovation. So, there are two major kinds of experimental research. First is the true experimental. So, this kind of research can be identified by three characteristics. First is the randomly formed groups. So, sa experimental or sa true experimental research, ginagawa yung pag-select ng respondents randomly. So, random ang pagkuha ng respondents. Second, manipulation of the treatment. So, dito na may tinatawag tayong experimental group kung saan yun yung gagamitin natin para to test kung itong intervention ba na to ay effective or magandang gamitin. And last is comparison among groups. So, meron tayong dalawang uh, groups dito na dito papasok yung control group and experimental group kung saan i-compare natin kung yung intervention ba na uh, pinatines natin ay effective or hindi naman effective kaparehas lang doon sa, sa results ng control group 
The main purpose of this research is to test the true cause and effect relationship of variables involved in the study. So, according to Prieto, it offers the highest internal validity of all the designs. So, meron tayong mga iba't ibang uh, research design, intro experimental. So, may tinatawag tayong one group post test only design. So, paano to ginagawa? In one group post test only design, a single group of individuals is measured on some dependent variable after an intervention has uh, taken place. So, for example, independent, so ito yung title ng research, independent video learning tool, its effect on academic performance of senior high school students. So, paano natin gagawin yung research na to using one group post-test design? First, of course, uh, magsiselect ka muna ng respondents mo, isang grupo uh, na inassign mo randomly. After that, gagamitin mo ngayon, i-apply mo yung intervention na test mo. And then, magpo-post test ka after nung intervention. So, ganito lang siya gawin. First, isa, uh, isang grupo lang to, isang group lang, and then, bibigyan mo siya ng intervention, and after ng intervention, bibigyan mo siya ng post test. Another design is the two groups post test only design. So, kung kanina, isang grupo lang ang gagamitin natin to test nung intervention, Ngayon, meron na tayong dalawang grupo. So, may tinatawag tayong experimental group. So, ito yung tinatawag nating treatment group. And then, meron tayong control group. So, paano natin gagawin yung uh, research natin? Using this uh, intervention. So, yung intervention natin using the independent video learning tool. So, first, after natin ma-select yung respondents natin using uh, i-assign natin yan randomly, bibigyan natin sila ng intervention. So, sino lang sa kanila ang mabibigyan ng intervention? Yung experimental group lang. So, si experimental group, gagamit ng intervention. Si control group, no intervention. So, wala kang ipapagamit na intervention kay control group. And then, after nyan, so after natin ma, uh, maibigay yung intervention, both experimental and control group ay magpo-postes. So, bibigyan nyo sila ng postes. So, pareho yung dalawang grupo, bibigyan natin ng postes. Ang kinaibahan nga lang dito, si control group ay walang intervention kang ibibigay. So, another design is the pre-test, post-test design. So, ito ay madalas gamitin, lalo na kapag sa mga academics. So, same yung title natin, same yung study natin. So, meron da tayong dalawang grupo, the experimental and control group. Again, sa true experimental research class, randomly ang pagkuha ng respondents. No? Uh, hindi natin basta-basta kunin. Marami naman tayong paraan para mag-select ng respondents randomly. So, dalawang grupo, again, may experimental group at control group. So, both Bibigyan natin ng pretest from the start. So, sa simula pa lang, nung study natin, bibigyan natin sila ng pretest, both experimental and control group. Then, after nilang mag-pretest, i-apply na natin ngayon ang intervention. So, yung intervention ay doon lang natin i-apply ka experimental group. Doon lang natin ipapagamit, doon lang natin uh, ititest. Pero sa control group, wala tayong ibibigay na intervention. Then, after nito, we both bibigyan natin sila ng post-test. So, do doon makukumpare natin kung ang intervention ba na ginamit natin, effective or hindi. Another kind of experimental research is the quasi-experimental. This kind of research is almost the same as that of true experimental design. The only difference is the absence of random assignment of subject to other conditions. So, dito, meron kang target. Hindi mo sila pipiliin randomly. Kumbaga, kahit sino, pwede mo maging subject. 
The commonly between the quasi-experimental and true experimental research is that some subjects receive intervention. So, yun lang ang uh, magkapareho sila or ma- uh, common na ginagawa sa true experimental at sa quasi-experimental. So, both subject, bibigyan mo sila ng intervention. So, again, yung kanina, yun ang pinakita ko ng mga iba't ibang design sa true, uh, true experimental research ay kagaya lang din sa quasi-experimental research. So, pwede rin gawin dito yung pre-test and post-test design, yung two groups post-test design. So, pwede lang gawin dito. Ang pinagkaiba lang, Uh, hindi mo sila pipil yung magiging respondents mo hindi mo sila pipiliin randomly so isang halimbawa ng quasi experimental research the effect of remedial program to beginners thank you for watching this video i hope you learned something don't forget to like subscribe and hit the bell button para updated kayo for more video tutorial this is your guide in learning your math lesson Your Walmart channel.